Hello React Native Developers, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zoic Switzerland. The horizontal custom slider was a super nice example, but it's based on the very old version of Expo. Plus, it's using the interactable component from Redash, which is not deprecated. And I think it would be a fun exercise to see how we can replace it using the latest version of Redash and overall upgrading an old Expo project. Let's have a look. The first thing I'm going to do here is upgrade the project using Expo Upgrade. So current version is 32 and we want to go to 37. Now we are going to need to install React Native Gesture Handler and React Native Reanimated. We used to have them through the danger zone. I don't know if you remember this one. And the last thing we're going to need to do is to upgrade the version of Redash. So Redash was very new, 124. Now we're at 1216, I think. Okay, let's start the project and go into the code. So we have three components, slider, labels, and cursor. So if we go here in slider, we need to update the animated import. So let's see if it can get, no. So import animated from React Native reanimated. So that looks good. And then we have labels. And here also we have the import we need to modify. Interesting. And interpolate colors. Here we can use a new function called mix color. So where we pass, and we can pass the color directly, gray or white. We don't need to use this old syntax. We can just pass the color directly. And the last part, is the cursor, which is a fun part because it's using interactable. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remove this component. Retext can be used also on Android now. And so I can remove this one again, need to fix the import for reanimated. I need to import here mix color. That looks good. And so here yeah, I'm going to use X. And I just noticed that this one is a class component, which we can remove as well. So I'm going to do a functional component instead. These go into props. Let's have a look. I can update here also the typing. Alright, it looks good. Now it doesn't move, of course, because we remove interactable. So now this is the fun part. We're going to remove interactable using modern functions from Redash. And this is a pretty typical use case 
in gestures and animations in React Native where we have a gesture and usually we assign an offset value to the gesture. So we remember the state uh, of the animation value when the gesture ends. So if I slide to three, I want to remember the position. And there is a function called with offset in order to do that. Here, we want both the gesture to drive the animation, but we're going to snap to one position whenever we release the gesture. And when doing this, when the gesture ends, we're going to use this offset value to do the snapping. So we have two values, offset value and translate uh, value from the gesture handler. And we're going to modify the offset value to snap. And it's a, or a very common use case where you have an animation which is driven by a gesture, but that can be driven by uh, some code. For instance, if you push a button, it will animate automatically. And in these cases, we're going to use, uh, we're going to animate on the offset value. This is what we use, for instance, in the Spotify example, where the bottom sheet could be opened through a gesture, but also you had a button which would close the bottom sheet. And in this situation, we would have the two values, the offset and the translation value. The gesture drives the translation value and the code, the button is driving the offset value. And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. So first things first, we're going to wrap it into a pan gesture handler. And we have helper functions in order to do that in Redash. So we need a couple of animation values. We need translation X. We need velocity X to calculate the snap point. And we need the state of the gesture. From gesture handler. So now we can create the gesture handler using on gesture invent from redash, which is a simple helper function. So translation x velocity x. And we can create a translate x value. Right now, for instance, I can attach it to translation x and we can create the transform. So transform translate x. One thing we can do also already is this translate x value. We need to assign it to x because it's shared between components. So we have a slider which creates this x value and it's shared between labels and cursor. So use code. No dependencies. Don't forget to wrap these into use memo one if you don't want to lose the identity of the animation values when you re-render the components, if you have a render. And if you don't protect the identity of these animation values, if you have a re-render, the gesture will be lost and it won't work anymore. So this is also a frequently asked questions where people are successful building a demo and then they have like a state change in the app. And as soon as this state change happen, they say, oh, I cannot do the gesture anymore. And this is because the identity of the animation values is lost. So I'm simply going to assign X to translate X. Let's have a look. So it looks good, but now it's always going to reset to one. And I guess also we need to add some clamping to the values. So here, I'm going to add a condition. So no, first we need to create this offset value. And so our animation value is actually the sum bit of offset and translation, uh, translation X. And if the gesture ends, we're going to assign offset to a timing function. And this is going to be also what we're going to assign to translate X. So the return value of offset of, of a set 
is a variable we assign. And here, I'm going to return a value, if not. So we go from value to snap point. We have a function to calculate the snap point from redash. So we give it the animation value, which is value. So it's from value to the velocity and the snap points, which we declared here. So the syntax has changed. In interactable, it needs the x, y. Here we just pass the values directly. So we have our timing function from redash. And this is state end. So let's have a look. So it moves and it snaps nicely. Isn't that cool? And here we should have some sort of clamping mechanism. Mm. So we can just, I guess, clamp. Clamp from zero to uh, count times size, I guess. And clamp we get from redash. So now it clamps nicely. Yeah, I guess it's minus one. Uh, count minus one time size. Yes, so now it's nicely clamped. So I hope you guys enjoy this example, a simple upgrade of an old project, but more importantly, we learned how to live without the interactable component. And we stumbled upon, I think, a very common pattern in gestures and animations, where we have an animation value, which is driven by both a gesture and some code. And for that, we have the animation values from the gesture handler, the offset value, and the gesture drives the translation value. The code is driving the offset value, and we manage to have the two cohabiting together uh, very well. Currently, I'm working on exciting updates for the Start React Native online course and on new content from the channel. So I'm really looking forward to talk to you soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.